Every day we experience the light coming from the sun around us, heating our bodies and showing us the colors of the objects around us. But how exactly is this light produced from the sun and all the other stars in the universe? In this video we will discuss how nuclear fusion works, how it eats up stars and how elements are formed. Let us first take a look at our own star, the sun. In the sun's core, its hottest part, temperatures goes up to 15 million kelvins. This, together with a density of 150 grams over centimeters cubed, illustrates just how extreme the conditions are. But according to classical physics, this would be still insufficient to overcome the Coulomb potential and to allow nuclear fusion to take place. Because the hydrogen nuclei repel each other, we need to ensure there is enough energy to overcome the repulsion. Even in the sun's core, fusion would not occur if it were not for quantum tunneling. Quantum tunneling is the phenomenon where wave function can propagate through a potential barrier. In other words, some particles, like electrons, can overcome Coulomb potential even if their total energy is lower than the potential energy they need to overcome. Now that we know how the reaction is able to take place, let's take a look at the particles involved. Before we show the simplified equation, it is worth noting that in reality this process takes place through a series of reactions called the proton-proton chain, but for our purposes it is enough to know that these are the starting ingredients, if you will, and this is our end product. Two protons plus two neutrons give us alpha particles, helium without its two electrons. This is an exothermic reaction, meaning that it will release more energy than goes into it. We can actually verify this by looking at the masses. We can take the mass of a proton to be 1.0073 AMU. AMU stands for atomic mass unit and it is defined as 1 over 12 of a 12 carbon atom or 1.66 times 10 to the minus 12 kilograms. The mass of a neutron is approximated to be 1.0087 AMU. As you can see, the total mass on the left hand side is not the same one as, as on the right hand side of this equation. We are missing 0.0305 AMU. So what caused this mass deficit? Well, let's add another two factors on the right hand side of this equation. We now have two protons plus two neutrons, giving us alpha particles plus neutrinos plus gamma rays. This is a more accurate description of the nuclear reaction. Neutrinos are very interesting in their own way because they don't interact significantly with matter. They also weigh next to nothing, so we can ignore them in this video. Gamma rays, on the other hand, do interact with electrons and protons in the sun, and this interaction liberates energy in the form of heat, which will increase pressure so that the sun does not collapse. So, as you can see, the mass deficit was converted into energy, in the form of gamma rays. This is a great example of how Einstein's more famous equation plays a huge role in our lives. It is just a matter of filling it in. E equals m, our mass deficit from before, converted into kilograms, multiplied by c squared, the speed of light squared. So each reaction creates 4.55 times 10 to the minus 12 joules. We can also easily calculate the efficiency of this reaction, which is just the mass deficit divided by the total mass going into the reaction, giving us 0.76% efficiency. Now it is important to know that this reaction takes place in every star, not just our sun. And what's also good to know is that there are many more fusion reactions. Helium will fuse into higher elements, like lithium, carbon and nitrogen, which will fuse again into more heavy elements, like magnesium, and this will continue on, each time creating heavier elements. And for every one of these reactions, more energy is released than you put into it. In other words, they are all exothermic. This can be explained by the fact that the structures of heavy elements are more stable than light elements. In forming heavier elements, some of the binding energy that kept the light air element together gets released. However, nuclear fusion usually stops at iron. This is because iron is a unique element, it is extremely stable. The reaction to fuse iron into another heavier element will only take away energy from its environment. It is endothermic. This is also the reason why in this graph, after iron, the average binding energy per nucleo starts to increase again. That said, stars do sometimes form other elements that are heavier than iron. Most famous ones are cobalt and cobalt blue, a molecule that we find on our planet thanks to chemical reactions, nickel and copper and copper sulfurate, another molecule that we find on planet Earth through chemical reactions. Even though these elements can account only for a tiny fraction of the elements created in star fusions. On the other hand, 
but heavier elements like gold and silver are produced into supernovae, stars explosions. In summary, nuclear fusion is when particles merge to form newer, heavier ones. The most common reaction is the one between two protons and two neutrons to create helium. In this reaction, some of the initial mass is converted into energy, which helps heat the star and keep it stable. All nuclear reactions up to iron are exothermic, meaning they release more energy than it goes into it.